Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hello, this is Joe Stedman. I'll be reviewing a war game today, thankfully. Uh, D-Day uh, at Omaha Beach. It's a solitaire game by Decision Games. Um, solitaire meaning you play it by yourself, solitaire. Uh, this is actually designed by John Butterfield. He's the same guy who did Ambush, my other favorite solitaire game. And I, This is in the honeymoon phase, so I like it a whole lot. I'm not sure if it's going to bump out Ambush. Um, but this is the same designer, and it feels a lot like Ambush, except for this game uses cards rather than using the paragraph system that's an ambush, and I'll explain that later. The game comes with a whole bunch of stuff. It comes with your, your charts, which are going to explain uh, what happens. This is an amphibious landings. This is the U.S. weapons chart. It comes with the Germans, what, you know, how they'll fire, what their priorities will be when they target, so you don't have to think about it. It explains it. Uh, U.S. results when you attack. Uh, basically a hierarchy of what the Germans are going to do, and then some optional German armor that is kind of neat. Uh, there's some optional rules where the German panzers can show up, like uh, some of the German generals wanted to happen but didn't happen. And then there's a turn sequence chart, which is nice. You got your basic rule book, and as far as the rule book goes, it's really tight. Uh, anything I wanted to find so far, I've been able to find. There's a lot of, I guess my only complaint would be some of the rules you really have to just assume things. You know, there's a lot of inference because it'll give you an example or it'll say here, so you have to infer later. That's what it means. Uh, I guess with my ASL background, I like to see every little rule spelled out. But uh, when I've had a question, I just have to use a logical deduction. I'll figure out what he wants. Um, but then you can also go on ConSim and Board Game Geek, and the designer is actually basically answering every question, so it's kind of works out nice. Then there's this really nice uh, color. Examples of play, which help you answer, help me answer a lot of my questions. It goes through all different scenarios of what could happen. A terrain effects on the back, and then this was really cool. This was a uh, uh, a, a thing that came with it. But it, all it is is the history of D-Day. It's got a beautiful map in there with the landing zones. It's got stories uh, of the, like uh, Lieutenant Spaulding's war, like little neat stories about General Coda. Then it's got a breakdown hour by hour of what actually happened at D-Day. And I found this really cool. It really got me in the mood to play the game uh, when I first got it. And this is really neat. And then it comes with a whole bunch of uh, units uh, representing the 1st Infantry Division and the 29th Infantry Division and some of the Germans. In this game, you're playing the, the Americans trying to take out the beaches. You can actually play it two-player, but if you play it two-player, one person plays the 1st Infantry Division and the other player will play the 29th Infantry Division. You'll kind of break things up. But it comes with all these markers and it comes with a deck of cards. And I'll explain these deck of cards in a minute. It comes with this beautiful map. If you kind of zoom out there, Monica, they got this beautiful map here. The map uh, looks very busy. There's a lot going on with all these little uh, colors and markers and the landing zones and the, the terrain and everything. Uh, the, the map was done by Joe Yopes. He did uh, a lot of the, a lot of cool games, uh, Pacific Rim games. I've liked. He, I like his designs a lot. His maps, and it's got uh, a turn the, the turns up here on top. It tells you when you would shuffle cards and when the tide's going to change. And there's lots of little fiddly rules, but they're not too complicated. And everything's covered really well in the rules. Now let me explain the uh, some cool things about this game. First, let's let's look at the units. This here would be the American unit. It's the 29th Infantry Division. It's the it's a regimental unit here. So you got Alpha First, the 115th Infantry Regiment, and it's a three strength. This here's got a 16 on it, meaning it comes in on the 16th turn, which would be at 10 o'clock in the morning during high tide, and three strength. And it's got this circle on it, and that circle is for the AI part of the game, determining who's going to get shot at and things like that. And on the cards you'll see symbols on top. Circles, triangles, circles. So it, it'll dictate the random element of the game. It'll figure out who the Germans shoot at. Now, when this, when this unit takes a loss, he flips over. A couple things you'll notice is his uh, strength will change, obviously, like normal. But then you'll see these little numbers on the side here, these little letters. This shows you what the unit now has. When it's a fully equipped unit, it has everything. But when it's damaged, it's only going to have certain weapons. Like this one has the bazooka and different weapons now. And then if it takes another loss, it's taken out of the game. And then you have to dig through the, all the stuff. That's why I have minus so many bags, so it's easier to find. 
Then you find the one pip of Alpha First of the 115th. And this one only has a bazooka left, it's two strength, and now you'll notice that the dot on there is white instead of black, which means it does not exert a zone of control as this one, the black one, would. But if this is killed, it's destroyed out of the game. And you put it over here in your destroyed markers box. Because on here, if you ever take eight regiments destroyed, the game's over. And that goes for either beach. So if you zoom out, either beach. So if e either one of your beaches takes eight units destroyed, the game's over. Now the game is really divided into two phases. Um, turns 1 through 16 are the initial landing on the beaches and clearing the beaches. And there's certain conditions you have to meet so that you can go into the second half of the game. And to be honest, I've only made it to the second half of the game once. And I've, prob I've played this uh, start to finish probably four times now. Yeah, four times. I play it, I work night shift and I'm able to set it up at the beginning of my shift. I work a 11 hour shift and I'm usually done halfway through my shift and I can start, and it's, it's, it's a perk of where I work. But and that's when I get the desk, when I'm assigned to the desk. Sometimes I'm not assigned to the desk. Anyway, so let me explain how the cards work. Now each card, each card is gonna have three different areas. The top is the landing and that's gonna determine when your units come on what happens to them as far as drift and uh, casualties and things like that and that's on one of the charts that comes with the game. The second is the random events and that reminds me of ambush because according to what game turn it is you're, when you're in the random event phase this is what's going to happen. This will bring on new German units, create heroes, all kinds of things. And then this is really the nuts and the bolts of the game of down here. This shows you who's going to fire on what turn, the Germans. So for instance on this card any American that's a triangle is going to get shot at. And only, now here's the Germans that'll fire. The green bunker, any green dot or green unit on the board. So if you look right here, here's a green, here's a green unit, or a green reinforcement area. But if you go up to the beach, this here is a green bunker. So this green bunker then shoots at all these areas out here. Now you see there's different colored dots, a circle, the dark circle, the, the half circle and then there's like a dot circle. This is heavy fire, sporadic fire, and sparse fire as an open circle. And that makes a big difference. But if you go back to the card here, this would mean that the green bunker, if it's two strength, and um, it can fire. The purple bunker, if it's two strength, can fire. And the red bunker, if it's one strength, it can fire, or if it's two strength. This little, there's little, the A and the M on there is for the second half of the game, so we don't have to worry about that because it doesn't come until later. But the little circle, the uh, tank track would symbolize that if there's a tank anywhere in his firing area, he gets to destroy it just like it would be an infantry. And there's no dice in this game. There's no dice in this game at all. So you're flip, simply flipping over these things to see who gets shot and who gets mangled. And then you look at the little dots, and there's a, one of the charts that comes with the game shows you a priority list. So for instance, anyone that's in the heavy fire that matches the colors will be the first guy to flip. And it tells you like, if it's the closest unit first and then the second unit. It, it breaks it all down real simple for you. Um, I didn't have any questions about that at all. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.